I double expertise Margaret and Bobber in a single day in order to run tests like this one to show you just how good the range commanders can be in Rise of Kingdoms. And yeah, they are looking very strong. So stick around in this video for a full breakdown of exactly how good Margaret and Bobber are, both at 5511 and when they're expertise. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Shiskel Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms. And in this video, I want to do a very simple thing. I want to review the results from literally hours of testing we did with Margaret and Bobber, both at 5511, and when they're both expertise, as you can see here on my screen. In fact, I burned through a very solid, what was it, something like 1,300 Universal Legendary Commander Sculptures from my collection of, uh, oh, well, I still have 2,400. So anyways, I burned through a lot of Universal Sculptures to get you this information. So if you like this kind of information, do me a huge favor, throw a like on the video, consider subscribing to the channel. Let's talk about the things that we tested and... I'll get to some footage from the testing and the test results, and at the end, I'll give you a summary of all of the things that we learned. Now, when we sat down to test, we actually had a couple objectives. First and foremost, we wanted to learn, assuming the combo's even any good, who needs to be the primary commander? Is it Margaret or is it Bobber? And there are some very strong advantages for Margaret, and I'll spoil this result now. Margaret was the superior primary commander. And there's a very simple reason for this, by the way. So if you're looking for the talent build you should use on your Margaret, it's very close to this one. Now I'll explain why there is one thing I would change. But the reason that this talent build really sings is because of the support tree. Not only do you have Rejuvenate, which is really great rage restoration, but you also have expert design. It's three talent points that gives you 18% of stats. Chat, that is a really absurd amount of stats. The one talent point I would change around from this build is to carve off one from Rejuvenate and to move that into Loose Formation. This has to do with the way that Rage Generation works, and I think with Margaret, you're probably going to over-rage by a significant amount if you have the full three points into Rejuvenate. So you could probably carve one point off of there, drop it into loose formation, and you'd be in a really great spot. This is in part because when you expertise Bobber, if we look at what he does, he increases the attack of this commander's siege units, and whenever they use an active skill, this troop will gain 50 rage per second for the next three seconds. So you are going to have some extra rage generation going on over here as well. Now, one thing was really, really weird that was very much emphasized by the testing, which I will show you in just a moment, which is that both of these commanders, actually both of them, I couldn't figure this out during the live stream because it's just was so counterintuitive to me. But again, both of these commanders get a boost if they're in melee range of the target. In other words, range uh, skills are so strong that the developers are not having them be full strength. The developers are, are weakening them. Unless you're in melee range of the target, unless the enemy is on top of your marches. So, for example, the active skill here, is, uh, this is on Bobber, says deal skill damage to the target troop. Damage factor 2,000. But if they're not right next to you, it's reduced by 50%. And Margaret has something similar. For three seconds, range normal attacks from this commander's troop deal 50% extra damage and deal additional skill damage, damage factor 500 but that's reduced by 50% if they're not right next to your target. So all that to say that range skill damage is really, really powerful. So powerful that the developers are having you hit harder when the enemy is already on top of you than when you can just plink away at the enemy from a distance. This is very important to keep in mind. Now, between the two commanders, Margaret and Bobber, and one thing that we did is make a bunch of siege gear. So this testing was done with this equipment. And because I'm missing two talents over here, okay, I got really close on this one, or totally missed on this one. But because I'm missing some talents, 
We left on my very weak armaments that I have on my farm, okay? And basically, we had almost identical equipment being run, full epics, no accessories, for the folks that we were testing against. And this allowed us to test... Um, it's not really with armaments because they didn't use any of their armaments. Um, I just use my armaments as a crutch to make up for the fact that I was missing a couple talents over here, okay? And I believe that I have actually slightly improved the quality of my armaments over here since the time that I recorded the video. My stats were a little bit lower before, but I think I got a couple good ones. Anyways, all that to say, the way that we tested this was in an Ark of Osiris practice match. Ark of Osiris practice matches are great because you don't have to pay a repair bill and you can test lots of different stuff. You can't switch around where your equipment is. So for the first round of testing that we did, we tested without equipment. Um, this was in order to learn primarily who should be the primary commander and directionally, how does this even work? So the first round of testing, no equipment, no armaments. Let's see what happens. We also, by the way, tested at 5511. We wanted to see how viable these commanders would be at 5511. So I can show you over here, boom, 5511, 5511. We did those tests first because obviously I couldn't go backwards. Once I expertise them, there's no going back to run this test. So I wanted to do something and we used this opportunity to sort of double up on the learnings here. So we're testing both 5511 and who should be the primary. So here you can see Margaret primary, Bobber secondary, 27,000 sevs for me, 21,000 sevs for them. And by the way, the methodology we used for this testing is we would have the march start at the edge of the range of the tower and then walk toward the tower and then battle, you know, the march that once it gets there. So we gave the ranged march a little bit of time to shoot at an enemy. So the assumption here is you will get some free hits onto a target before it reaches you. And that's how we're measuring these trades. Up next, we had the 5511s battle against Nevsky Joan. And Nevsky Joan slays, man. Uh, 29,000 sevs for the Margaret uh, Bobber, and then 13,500 sevs against the Nevsky Joan. Um, this is not looking great for a 5511 situation. From here, Margaret and Bobber against Guan and Skippy again. Um, this time, it's 27,000 to 19,000. Certainly, Margaret and Bobber are not looking so bad. I mean, look, this is 5511, and this is one of the best expertise field combos in the game that they're battling against. We look to the next report. This is the Guan Skippy from Scoobs. Big thank you again to Thuggy and Scoobs for doing all this testing with me. I really appreciate it. 27,000 to 22,500. This is honestly a pretty damn good result, all things considered, that these are 5511s for the range commanders. Then we ran the Nevsky Joan test again. I like to run tests multiple times, and the reason is, I think, because of randomness. You could get a completely unrepresentative result, assume it's the truth, and draw wrong conclusions. That's why we do this a couple times, chat. 28,000 to 13,300. So, um, very similar to the first result. Now we switch it up to Bobber Primary, and the results very simply get worse. So 27,600 to 19,000 against the Guan Skippy. 28,500 to 12,600 against the Nevsky Joan. 28,000 to 18,900 against the Guan Yu Skippy. And then 28,400 to 12,000 against Nevsky Joan. I mean, it's not that much worse than Margaret, but I think it is definitely worse. Now, we did run other tests as well. We tried to put Matilda of Flanders in the mix, and this is a pretty bad result, 32,700 to 15,600. For me, the takeaway from trying some of these other commanders was that you really should just use the ranged commanders for ranged combat. That's really it, and it's a very simple conclusion. There are lots of different commanders that are curiosities that you could mix in, but remember, ranged commanders are the only commanders that will have their active skills work when they are in tower mode. And guys, like, I get that you can find some commanders that have a lot of stats on them, but man, to not have an active skill, remember, that's the best skill on the commander. So yeah, I think you've got to use double ranged commanders. You could theoretically at this time, because we just don't have that many, 
split your two ranged commanders, and then you'd be able to make two marches. I just don't think they'd be very good. All right. We tried a Margaret and Bobber and also wanted to see what happens if the march doesn't actually get to you. In other words, Thuggy just stood there with Guan Yu Skippy at range, and I plinked away. And when I get to free hit against him, uh, I took 11,000 and he took 42,000 salves. Effectively a four for one trade in my favor if I just get to shoot him and he doesn't charge into me. This is why ranged combat is strong, by the way, is if you can find these situations consistently where you don't get put into close quarters and you just get to shoot at people from a distance, that is where you're going to freaking shine. Um, if, by the way, uh, the march starts on top of you, or um, in this case, we used XY Nevsky, um, then things could be pretty brutal. Uh, 34,000 to 12, almost 13,000 is a pretty bad result for Margaret Bobber. Um, looking to one other thing we tried. Oh my God. This Attila Takeda versus Margaret Bobber was pretty brutal. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, what do we say here? 60,000. 600 sevs to 28,000 is pretty brutal. I don't think he had equipment on. I think it's just Attila Takeda was a really brutal march. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you're going to battle against an Attila Takeda, you probably want to be mindful uh, of targeting something else potentially instead of this high counterattack march. Yikes. That was pretty brutal. But remember, these guys are 5511, okay? These guys are still 5511. We need to go and expertise them. And so expertise them we did, and we entered into another practice match to see how the results changed. And this is Savage. Now witness the power of our fully operational ranged battle station. Margaret primary, Bobber secondary, equipment and a few armaments on for me in order to equal the equipment on the Guan Yu and all the other marches that Thuggy and Scoobs are gonna use in this testing. And keep in mind that we tested without accessories because my account simply doesn't have those. This is my farm account. Um, and uh, I'll talk about why I did this on my farm in a bit, but let's review these juicy results here. 22,500 to 41,000 against Guan Skippy. That is a Guan Skippy that started at range, closed the distance and immediately charged, but still got absolutely decimated. Absolutely brutal from here. 21,000 to 43,000. Absolutely brutal. Guan Skippy, we are repeating this result. 21,000 to 41,000 again. Three times we repeated this result. Margaret Bobber is not a fluke. It is clapping cheeks, two for one style. When they started at range and closed the distance, okay? Now, Nevsky Joan still gets the work done. And our hypothesis here is that because the cavalry move so much faster, you get less free hits at range and you get less time to accumulate rage. And that makes a big difference for the way the whole combat evolves. So Margaret Bobber, 28,700 to 23,000 with the Nevsky Joan coming at them. From there, we did another Nevsky Joan, 27,800 to 22,500. From there, we did another Nevsky Joan, Three times, in my opinion, gives you a nice conclusion. 29,000 to 25,000. It does look like Margaret and Bobber are good, but um, good news, everybody. They're not so busted that everybody needs to use them, okay? They are, in my opinion, a, a thing you can choose to do or a thing you can choose to not do. And if you don't have them in situations where there's like a river, you'll probably be sad because you probably could have got a lot of value. If you don't have them in, in a place where there's a choke point and you can stay protected, you'll probably be sad because again, there's a lot of value. But for all the rest of the time, I mean, you don't have to have them, okay? They are good, but they're not busted. That was the thing that I think we learned. The 5511 was okay, but expertise is really where it's at for both of them, in my opinion, this is where you wanna be. Now, we also tested against another march here. We wanted to see if it wasn't just, you know, Guan Skippy that for some reason is just terrible against the ranged commander. So we we brought out the Boudicca E song and we traded positive against that as well. 27,000 to 31,500 is a nice positive trade. 
We also ran against uh, another Guan Yu Skippy. This time, I believe we had the Guan Yu Skippy standing on top of the tower. So instead of running to the tower, we said, how does the trade change if there's not that run-up time and you just start in close quarters? 26,300, actually 26,400 to 34,300. So this is still a win for Margaret Bobber against the Guan Skippy combo, but not by as much as it was before. Um, we also did that again, 24,900 to 28,700, demonstrating that we could do this consistently. And if you put the Nevsky Joan right on top of the Margaret Bobber, oh, it's pretty cringe, 32,400 to 13,400. Nevsky Joan just freaking slays, man. It is one of the best open field marches in the game, not only for its buffs and debuffs and march speed, um, but just for raw stats and strength. Um, so, yeah, uh, Nevsky Joan, everybody, doing work here against Margaret Bobber. So, you know, if I were coaching you on your account and you're just getting the season of Conquest and you're like, just cool, should I do the ranged commanders or should I, should I do like Nevsky and Joan? I was like, you should do Nevsky and Joan. And that's like a very clear conclusion for me anyways. In this test, we had Guan Yu and Skippy standing, I believe on top of the Margaret and Bobber. And I think Thuggy had better gear than I did. I think he's got some legendaries and some iconics in there. So once you have a gear advantage, the Guan Yu and Skippy can get the win. And in this final test, we had Nevsky and Joan just stand there and I shot at it at range. I took 13,000 and they took 36,400 and they are using T5s, by the way. So you can still get a three for one quality trade. I used T4s, they used T5s for this one test, which is really insane. So you can get a really good trade, even if you're outclassed, if you can shoot at stuff at range. And that's really the attraction of this particular combo. It's very simply, that's the attraction. Now, some people will say, Chisco, you have 216,000 troops, you did something wrong. But let me just remind you, um, getting ahead of some of those comments that I'm sure will be on the video, that in the talent trees for Margaret and Bobber, if you look in the engineering tree, they give you extra troops, 3%. So it would be incorrect to not leverage the full um, march size, it would be incorrect to reduce down because in a real field situation, you would have extra troops. So this is representative of a real uh, situation, okay? So all in all, I think the range commanders are really solid. Do I think you should use them 5511? No. I think that if you want to use them, you're going to expertise them. If you're going to be the person who expertises them, that's because one of the following things needs to be true. Either you're on a farm, like I am, and I plan to set up my farm, have it get war frenzy, and then it will automatically shoot at things that come in its range. I will set up this thing defensively in a cautious position. I will assume it will be full sad faced by the time I come back to it. And hopefully it got value in the meantime. That means that in an even fight, it's kind of protecting us. In a fight that we're overrun, I mean, at least it's more firepower. And in a best case, it's kind of covering a retreat. And if there's enough towers set up, maybe the enemy will be deterred from chasing us to our position. Maybe. Hard to say. Um, so farms, I think that this is a win. If this is what you want to do, you're going to need equipment. You're going to need to have armaments. There's a lot of things you need to get in place before you'll actually trade positive. But I think it could be okay. In fact, I think it could be pretty good, which is why I've done it. Um, the other group of people that I think sh that should, you know, expertise this is if you really like the idea of ranged. I mean, if you're really into that and you'd rather sit there managing your ranged marches rather than, you know, managing up close uh, fighting marches like Nevsky Joan, this is a pretty cool combo to run. In fact, if you're the kind of person, you know, who wants to really just run around with one field march, um, you could have a commander pairing like Nevsky Joan. You could fight with that in the field and have your tower set up behind to support. And I, I honestly think that's not probably like the big Imperium Kingdom meta, but I think it's very reasonable and still very helpful. But do I think that everybody needs to expertise these commanders like I think everyone needs to expertise Nevsky and Joan? No, I don't think so. And I think that's probably a good thing. I think that from a balance standpoint, they're strong, but not so strong 
that it'll be infuriating to fight against them. In fact, once you get on top of these towers, you're not going to just like decimate them, but you are going to have the advantage. And so the takeaway for folks that are fighting against a bunch of towers is that you need to close the distance quickly. And when you close the distance, they actually start doing more ranged skill damage, even though they're technically not really at range anymore. They're still in ranged mode, which means that once you are next to towers, you'd better be targeting them because if you're not targeting them, they're literally dealing more damage and you're not countering the fact that they're dealing more damage by just running them down and taking advantage of the fact that you've closed the distance. So remember, you see a tower, you either want to stay out of the range or you want to close the distance and knock them down. And I think that if the enemy has a lot of open field, they could deliver a lot of hurt when you try to walk over to take out the towers. So it's going to be cool to see this used strategically. Now, if you're looking for some real world examples of where range is being deployed, so far, it actually isn't. Uh, we spectated this big KVK over here with some banner kingdoms, including 1307, 1079, 1647, 1664. One V is in this KVK, all right? And we spectated this KVK, and there honestly was not much going on with ranged. Um, really didn't see a lot of ranged commanders at work. And they've been battling over this pass for a really long time. I mean, this has just been going back and forth literally for like the last 24 hours at the time of this recording. This is a double rally over here. But neither side is really using lots of ranged commanders. Also, dude, where are those rallies physically located on my screen? Whatever. Um, so these guys are not using ranged. I think a part of that is that, yeah, you know, people are still getting their value. They had just wrapped up the spenders events for this. Um, but also, I think that people are not expertising them just yet. A and I don't blame them. Everybody wants to wait and see for somebody else to go and expertise commanders, which is why I did it. So if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, throw a like on here and consider subscribing. It'd mean a lot to me if for the 1,300 sculptures I put into these commanders, you just dropped a like on the video, shared it with a friend. And if you want to see the detailed testing for yourself in full, it was multiple hours of practice matches. Um, don't worry, there's timestamps on the live stream so you can jump right to it. Card will be in the end screen for that in just a second.